Hello, how are you doing? I came across quite a fun and interesting article in The Guardian, which was published just a couple of days ago, um, written by Selby Wynne Schwartz, which are her top 10 experimental feminist books. And uh, of course, she wrote the book After Sappho, which is about the lives of turn of the century women in Europe that are trying to reinvent and reform their lives for themselves, uh, inspired by the, the writings of uh, past feminists and um, other women. And uh, so, yeah, she's um, she's obviously very interested in the subject matter, um, has been inspired by lots of uh, feminist writing in the past. Um, and in particular, she references Sarah Ahmed's book, uh, Living a Feminist Life, in which Ahmed talks about the importance of creating a a survival kit. Uh, part of that survival kit is including lots of books and uh, and Schwartz says uh, that she um, learned from this book that we should cherish the collective and smuggle in more books than are officially uh, allotted. Um, so, but, um, but she has come up with her list of uh, top 10 uh, experimental feminist books that have really inspired her and shaped her thinking. So I thought it would be really fun to go through this list and pick out which books I've read, which books I've not read, which ones I'm interested and keen to, to get to. I always love looking through a book list like this. And I've read three of, of the books uh, on this list, but a lot of them I hadn't heard of. Uh, some, A couple of them are by authors who I've read before, but I've just not read these particular books. But yeah, a number of these books I've not really come across before and sound really interesting. So I'd love to know uh, if you've read any of these books as well and if you'd recommend them or if you have your own favorite experimental feminist books um, that have really inspired you. I'd love to hear about that in the, the comments below. But I'll put uh, in the description below uh, a link to this article so you can have a look at it but also list all the books that she numbers in this list that she's created. A number of these books are fiction but uh, since they are experimental they are kind of genre bending in that they uh, often incorporate uh, historical detail and essay writing and uh, facts um, as as well as um, some memoirist writing. Um, so yeah, I mean, much like After Sappho itself, it's kind of, it, it the, the book creates its own form and that's what makes it experimental. First up is The Blue Clerk by Dion Brand. And this text takes the form of a dialogue between a poet and the blue clerk, who is the keeper of the poet's pages. And this takes place on a lonely wharf. And I think their discussions take the form of prose poems um, them, themselves, but in their dialogues uh, they reference a uh, number of uh, different writers and artists and philosophers uh, to describe th aspects to do with the nature of language and memory and time itself, so really big subject matter. And through these they're exploring the relationship between the poet and the larger world and the author and the artwork that they create. And Schwartz says of this book that I have come to believe that Brand can see through a written page to its hidden side. Float by Anne Carson. And uh, as she says in this, this isn't even necessarily a book itself, more a collection of chapbooks um, because it's really pushing the limits of what a book even means, like the physical <laughs> nature of, of a book, because um, it's it's uh, formed like a big transparent case that is in, enclosed within this is a whole series of different chapbooks which can be read in any order. So uh, whenever a reader you know approaches this, they'll approach it in an entirely different way from another reader who might start with one chapbook or another. And um, these books, uh, these chapbooks um, explore myth and memory uh, beauty and loss. And Anne Carson is just such a fascinating writer. So I've not read this, but um, I have read Anne Carson's autobiography of Red. And uh, yeah, the, this is such a, a fascinating story and it's so difficult to describe. Um, it's it's about this, um, you know, character from literary history, but it, that is kind of taken into the present day age and, uh, and, and it's exploring 
exploring the the nature of uh, this character's life and thoughts and feelings and reflections and um, yeah it's just uh, it's, it's, it's so moving and um, profound as well as drawing upon all of this literary history. In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado uh, this is such a moving memoir sort of slash essay collection. Um, in, in it uh, the author describes uh, her experiences being in an abusive same-sex relationship but also reflects on aspects of uh, horror themes, um, horror themes in like films and literature and um, yeah has lots of moving reflections uh, upon that. Um, so yeah I, I loved reading this book and actually my, my husband just read it recently um, him, himself and uh, also found it very moving um, but also uh, Carmen Marie Machado um, wrote a really great short story collection uh, that I loved called Her Body and Other Parties um, so I'd also recommend that. Anna Petova crosses a bridge by Renee Gladman and even though Schwartz describes this as the third book in a series she says uh, you could easily begin here you don't need to have read the other books first. Uh, it takes place in a mythical city called Ravica in which architecture itself can speak. Uh, it has language and a personality and way of communicating and uh, so it's really difficult to summarize and describe what these books are are about. I don't know if I quite understand from the descriptions of it but I, I love this one. Um, I read this one summary where it describes how it's about the radical realities of the insubstantial and uh, yeah I just love that phrase. But Schwartz also likens this book to Italo Calvino's Invisible Cities where the book wanders through impossible cityscapes. Margaret the First by Danielle Dutton uh, a few years ago here on booktube so many of us were going wild for this novel which is in part a fiction about the 17th century writer and philosopher Margaret Cavendish uh, but is also kind of a biography of her life. Um, it's kind of mixture of, of forms like that. Um, it is such a compelling and fascinating story about this woman that in her time was very eccentric. Um, she was labeled by a number of people as Mad Madge and uh, follows yeah, her life and her struggle um, to express herself. And uh, I'd also read uh, Margaret Cavendish's uh, book The Blazing World which is such a fantastical and fascinating book that um, takes place in the, the Arctic and there are these animals that are speaking and having philosophical conversations as like a classic novel. It is absolutely wild and so eccentric and uh, yeah I, I, I found it so compelling but this um, slender novel is also yes yeah, such a, a fascinating and wonderful experience. The Color Line by Igiaba Sego. Uh, this author was born in Italy by comes from Somali heritage and this novel was inspired by true events and the story intertwines the lives of two black female artists uh, who are outsiders in Italy um, but trying to make their way in the, the country and they are separated by centuries but it looks at their concerns to do with racism and colonialism and the overlapping of those things be it throughout these large periods of time. Pond by Claire Louise Bennett and this is a novel that follows the story of an unnamed woman living on a coastal town and uh, living a very solitary life and how she is sorting through a number of physical objects and how those objects sort of relate to her life and her experience and her understanding of, of the world. Um, I've not read this book um, which I believe was uh, Claire Louise Bennett's first uh, book but I have read her more recent Checkout 19 uh, which is such a, a fascinating story. Um, there were some sections of it I found slightly tedious but other sections I was absolutely riveted by in her discussions of, of language and, and culture and uh, yeah her sort of outlook on, on the world so yeah really interesting writer. I just need a quick sip of tea uh, with uh, my mug with some of my favorite feminists on it. <laughs> the Silk Road by Catherine Catherine Davis. This story takes place uh, during a yoga class somewhere in the icy north and during this class um, someone doesn't arise 
from corpse pose. Uh, but there are a number of individuals in this class, um, including an astronomer, an archivist, a botanist, uh, the, the keeper, the topologist, the ge geographer, and uh, the iceman, and how um, through their dialogue they explore the ways that these different individuals have come to this point and this this place. Um, so, uh, so Schwartz describes this as a beguiling novel of journeys beyond individual selfhood. Next is one of my favorite novels from the past few years, The Great Big Quacker, that is Duck's Newburyport by Lucy Ellman. Uh, I just adore this novel so much. It's so compulsively readable, even though uh, it is so long. I, I agree with Schwartz that I think it is the perfect length. Um, following the thoughts and meditations and anxieties of a woman in middle America who's an independent business owner as well as a mother following uh, yes, her train of thought throughout the course of uh, a few days. And I think about this book all the, the time because um, uh, it, it does so accurately, I think, reflect our thought patterns and experiences and the way the, the mind works. I mean, uh, so yeah, I, I think of it when, um, I mean, often I've seen so many films and movies that often um, I'll be thinking about something and then it'll, uh, there'll be some small relation to a line from a film and then I'll just be replaying and speaking that, that line from a film in my mind, um, which is totally unrelated in a way to this subject that I was thinking about, but which um, it, it does like all sort of connect together and so I think it's so extraordinary how she does that in this this novel and I love that um, I my copy of this it's signed by uh, Lucy Elman and in it she um, says uh, she calls me the cinnamon bun twirler of my ducks club um, which I feel so honored to to be called that um, she, she called me that because I made a whole video in which I talked about this book um, for a very long time but also demonstrated um, making cinnamon buns for the very first time and finally on Schwartz's list there is Beautiful Experiments by Sadia Hartman. Uh, this novel is about the lives of a number of black women at the dawn of the 20th century. They were the first uh, generation to be born after emancipation and so it explores how through their, their lives they're trying to establish what freedom and independence really mean and um, how that can be formed uh, throughout their lives. So yeah, sounds like such a fascinating book. I like how Schwartz describes how there are bean soups and racist violence, operettas and tenements. Above all, there is an immense tenderness in recovering and rewriting these stories, restoring their rightful protagonists to the center. So those are all the books uh, on Schwartz's list of 10, but uh, of course um, she says you should smuggle more books uh, that you can into these. And one of my favorite experimental feminist books of of all time is Virginia Woolf's The Waves. I mean, she mentions Mrs. Dalloway in her story, but um, but my favorite Virginia Woolf novel, and actually my favorite novel of all time, is this book, which is so extraordinary and lyrical and beautiful and follows the lives of six characters throughout the entire course of their life where their voices are in some ways combined, but also fiercely individual and um, which become more distinct as you read the book on more and read it multiple times as I've reread this book uh, countless times and just love it so much and, and always highly praise it and recommend it. So yeah, so th those are all of the, the books um, I'm going to talk about. But let me know some of your own favorite experimental feminist books um, that you've come across. Um, what would you recommend to me? Uh, let me know about that in the comments below. But also if you have read any of these books, if you have any thoughts or feelings about them or if you're interested in reading them now I'd love to hear about it but uh, I hope you're doing well reading good things and I will speak to you again soon bye bye